In this video, we're going to take a look at a range of ultrasonic wind sensors from a Spanish company called Calypso. They make three sensors, the mini, the portable, and the ultra low power wired. They also manufacture a range of Neiman 2000, Neiman 183 and Wi-Fi gateways. And this video, we're going to show you connecting these up to instruments from NASA, Raymarine, Garmin and B&G, and we'll also connect up to multifunction displays from Raymarine, Garmin and B&G. Before we differentiate between the models, just tell you a bit on how these things actually work. Put simplistically, they are simply measuring the time of flight from transmitting to receiving a ultrasonic sound wave. Wind will change the speed of the ultrasonic, ultrasonic sound wave. There are four sensors which are alternatively pinging each, each other. And using those four sensors, it can work out the direction and the velocity of the wind. So there's no moving parts, it's just using ultrasonic sound waves. So let's take a look at the smallest model in the range. This is called the Mini. It measures 43 millimeters in diameter, weighs 78 grams, so very lightweight. It's IPX8 waterproof rating, which means it's submersible down to one meter for 30 minutes. It has a quarter inch standard camera mount thread, so you can mount it on your GoPro. Uh, mount or any other camera mount. The output is Bluetooth, so it will stream to your iPhone or tablet. Um, if you want to integrate it with a chart plotter or instrument, you can connect it via Bluetooth to the one of the NEMA gateways that converts the Bluetooth to NEMA 2000 or NEMA 183. It charges inductively from this little charge pad that's included in the pack, plugs into a USB source and charges, or you can charge it on um, your existing iPhone or, or Android wireless charger. Takes four hours to charge from scratch, and once it's fully charged, gives you 150 hours of battery life. Accuracy wise, it, it, it's plus or minus 0.3 meters per second at 10 meters per second, so we're looking at 3%. Uh, ideally suited for dinghy sailing, coaching, marking out race marks, uh, race marks, um, sports boats, uh, keel boats, um, just light, versatile, not a permanent mount. Um, I would say this is more a sort of um, portable on and off type of sensor. Okay, the next model in the range is called the portable. So bigger, 70 mil in diameter, 135 grams, still not a heavy weight, but uh, there is a solar panel on the top which charges an internal battery and once fully charged, that battery will give you 29 days of operation. It's IPX8, so it's still fully waterproof. It works with all the, the same uh, Bluetooth apps as the Mini, and has an M16 by two mil thread in the base, so it can fit on a range of poles. This is a carbon fiber pole. Um, there are various lengths. 33, one meter and uh, two meter versions of that. And this is an aluminium pole. There is a mast mount. And once again, like the Mini, it can Bluetooth to a NEMA gateway to convert this into 183 or NEMA 2000 or Wi-Fi. Um, as it's solar panelled, uh, solar, solar powered, this can be more of a permanent installation and go up the top of the mast. 
so you don't have to worry about charging it on the inductive charge pad. This will charge from the solar panel. And uh, accuracy wise, slightly better than the, um, than the Mini. So this will give you uh, plus or minus 0.1 meters per second at 10 meters per second, so about 1%. And as it's more permanent installation, this will be great for up the mast of a cruising yacht or a racing yacht, or all, you still use it for coaching, still use it for uh, race management. Uh, it has that solar powered facility. Okay, this is the ultra low power wire model. So ultra low power because it only draws about 0.3 of a milliamp, so very little power draw. It has to be connected to the ship's 12 volt supply and also has an NMEA 183 wired output. So you can connect this directly to an NMEA 183 uh, instrument or chart plotter. It has Wi-Fi built in, so you can communicate via Wi-Fi. And if you want a Bluetooth output or a NEMA 2000 output, you would use one of the gateways wired into there. So it's, uh, it can convert and then will work with all the, uh, the free apps that are available. Accuracy wise, it's about 1%, but unlike the portable the mini, you can change the output, the update rate, and you can operate at board rates right up to 115,000 board rate. So configurable to suit your application. Really designed for permanent mast top mounting on a, a, a cruising or a, a race yacht. So that's the three sensors. And now we're gonna just have a take a look at the gateways. There are various versions of the gateway. They all have Bluetooth, uh, but uh, the, the versions are an NMEA183. So if you're using either of these two, the mini or the portable, you can, uh, can talk to this via Bluetooth and then output NMEA183. There's an NMEA2000 only, um, again, uh, connects wirelessly and outputs, plugs into an NMEA 2000 backbone. Or there's this high-end version which has NMEA 183, NMEA 2000, uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So, so if you were using the, this, which has Wi-Fi already, you can use this as a Wi-Fi extender. Um, all of them have a USB Cable. This is for configuration or, or software updates, and they are fully waterproof IPX8. There's a range of grommets in there depending on what cable you use for your NMEA 183. Um, they can. There's two NMEA outputs, so you can connect up to two NMEA 183 devices, uh, and also monitor on a using a high-end monitor on a on a laptop using Wi-Fi as well. So. Later on in the video, I'll show you how to connect this up with these devices up to uh, some instruments and chart plotters. So, go back to the mini. I'm gonna show you how to use the free app Anima Tracker and connect up to this device. So you select the Anima Tracker app and then you scan and we're connected to either the portable or the mini. I'm gonna choose the mini. So it's now connected up to the mini. And we can see at the top, we've got apparent wind angle, true wind angle, and at the bottom, apparent wind speed and true wind speed. So I've got a little multi-speed hand wind fan here. This is now connected to my iPhone, as I showed you. And I'm going to just show you this working. So I've changed the speed of the fan. Change the direction.
you can see Anima Tracker is changing as I change the direction and the speed of the fan. So this is a free app you can download. So it's just an example of how to use this straight out of the box with a free app. So this is a NASA Clipper wired wind setup with the instrument, the junction box, the mast cable, and the masthead unit. It's a traditional vane and cups masthead unit. So when you move the vane, you'll see the indicator showing the direction of the wind. And you spin the cups, you'll see the velocity of the wind in the center of the screen. I'm going to show you how to wire an ultrasonic wind sensor directly to this junction box in place of the NASA masthead unit. So I'm going to turn the power off. Undo the three wires from the sensor. And then wire in the Clipso. Now you see the Clipso has four wires. There's positive your voltage, positive and ground, and then you have your RS485 data wires, and for NMEA 183, the negative wire is grounded. So ground is positive. The green and white go to the ground. And the yellow is the NMEA 183 transmit from the Calypso. So the ultrasonic unit is now wired. On the front, uh, underneath the unit, there's a, a little notch that shows you the bow, point map to the bow of the boat to set up the direction. So. So now it's, it's gone through its boot up routine. I'm just gonna apply wind using this small fan. It shows the direction and velocity. Change the velocity. Change the angle. So it's as simple as just wiring it into the junction box. If you wanted to use the uh, Bluetooth version, you would have to go via a, an interface box. So this Bluetooth to the interface box, and then this connects to this junction box via an NMEA183 output. If you want to use one of the wireless ultrasonic wind sensors and connect to the NASA Clipper, you will need to connect via an NMEA Connect Plus gateway. This gateway converts the Bluetooth or receives the Bluetooth signals from the sensor and converts them to NMEA 183 or NMEA 2000. The first thing you do with the gateway is you have to configure it 
to recognize the wind sensor and also set the board rate, so the rate of transmission to be compatible with the instrument you're connecting to. And you do that via this USB cable, you plug it into your USB, USB uh, port on your laptop or PC and uh, you open up the configuration software and you set all those parameters up and you also put in the MAC code of the ultrasonic sensor so it knows where it's getting the information from. These are fully IPX rated uh, and when you open the top, you'll see it's sealed as a gasket that makes it fully waterproof. There's a connector block which is clearly labelled and this is where we'll be connecting the power, this needs to be powered and also we're connecting the NMEA 183 cable to the junction box on the clipper. So the gateway is now wired up, so you power and NMEA 183 and the NMEA 183 is wired into the NASA junction box. When I apply power, there'll be a green light that comes on in the junction box. We're connected to the portable solar powered unit. So this is sending wireless data to this box and the box is converting it to NMEA183 and on the display we have wind direction and speed. In this setup we have the ultrasonic portable talking to a BNG Triton 2 via uh, NMEA Connect Plus Gateway, NMEA 2000 Network and to the Triton 2. So the gateway is connected up to one T-piece, power to the second T-piece and the Triton 2 to the third T-piece, terminated by two uh, termination resistors either end of the network over the backbone. So I set the BNG up to look at apparent wind speed and apparent wind angle. And when I use the little fan, you'll see the wind angle moving and wind speed adjusting. As I move the direction You'll see the indicator on the BNG moving. Now this setup would work with a Garmin GMI 20 a Raymarine I-70 or any NMEA 2000 based instrument or you could plug straight into a plotter that has uh, NMEA 2000. This setup we're using the Raymarine I-60 wind instrument, analog and digital wind instrument connected via an STNG to device net mail cable going by the uh, network and the gateway and the data is coming from the portable uh, wind sensor. 
So I'm just going to emulate some wind. And you see the wind speed and indicator. moving. Now you could use either of the ultrasonic wireless devices or you could use the more accurate wired device going into wired directly into this gateway which converts the RS-232 or NEMA-183 to NEMA-2000 to STNG. So you could use any three of those, any one of those three sensors with this I-60. In this setup, we are connected uh, to a Garmin GPS map 923. So it's connected up via NMEA-2000 via the NEMA Connect Plus and this 923 straight out of a box So we don't actually have to configure anything on the Garmin. Just go into the default wind page, and there's the wind information. And this up here is the apparent wind angle. The true wind angle will vary because it's using GPS data, hasn't got a heading sensor, so you might see the true wind angle varying like that, but that's just because uh, it's hunting around for a heading. It has our GPS, uh, position but it's hunting around for a heading um, and when I apply wind to the sensor you can see the wind speed and angle moving So that's really simple to connect to the Garmin. And again, this could be a Raymarine Axiom, it could be a B&G Zeus, or any uh, NIMA 2000 MFD that, that has a wind page. In this setup, we've connected the ultra low power wired sensor to a Raymarine Axiom multifunction display. And it's connected, it's hardwired into the NMEA Connect Plus data box. And this converts the NEMA 183 output from the URP sensor into NEMA 2000 and is connected to the Raymarine via a NEMA 2000 backbone. To configure the Raymarine to recognize the Calypso wind sensor, we're going to settings, to network. It's already found the Connect Plus network on the network. Go into data sources, click wind, and then if we refresh the wind, it's looking for anything that will provide wind data. So it's found the NEMA Connect Plus. If I set that to manual selection. So we've now configured the Raymarine 
to use the Calypso for its wind data. And if I pick a dashboard, let's look at the sailing dashboard. simulate wind with this fan you can see the direction and the velocity of the wind. <laughs> 